Hello, hello, I'm Brunton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. In this video, we are going to conclude our video series on carboxylic acids. Specifically, we're going to finish by looking at some of those trickier reactions and just learning about some of the important principles you need to know to do well on the MCAT. The first reaction we will look at is the Fischer esterification. And while this mechanism is similar to what we saw in the previous video, it is a little bit more complicated and requires acidic conditions to occur. The reaction proceeds as follows. Let's take our carboxylic acid here. And immediately we are going to react it with some sort of acid. I'll just do acid on a water. So again, I wanna draw attention to our partial positive here. We've got a partial negative oxygen. So because of this partial negative oxygen, these electrons are really hungry. So they are gonna go out, grab this hydrogen, take this bond back onto what is now water. And it's gonna produce something like this. Now, this is not stable. This is a positively charged oxygen. And a positively charged oxygen up here, it's gonna be making the partial positive here a little bit less positive, but still very ripe for attack. So let's attack it with something like this. Just a simple alcohol. This alcohol, we're gonna pop up in there, kick on up. Just this should look familiar. We're gonna kick on up the extra electron. It's gonna give us something like this. So already we're looking a little bit more stable, but we still got that pesky positive charge down here we'll wanna clean up. Luckily we're sitting in water, so that's not too tough to do. Or even we could have more of that alcohol group take it. So let's have more of the alcohol take it. So again, we've got those two electrons right there. I'll draw there. I'm just gonna grab that hydrogen, kick that up on there. So now we're nice and clean. Now we are nice and stable. We've got two alcohols. We've got our alcohol with a methyl group, and we've got our R group that we have not changed. But we could be more stable. This is, again, where the acidic conditions are going to come in handy. These are going to protonate that top alcohol group, which still, mind you, is partially negative. So it's happy to grab a proton. It'll do that. So we're going to keep one of those unprotonated. We've still got our alcohol down there. And we now have this really unstable water group on top of our molecule. We can't have this. So the molecule is going to get rid of that by just taking some of these electrons, popping it off, forming water. This should be looking really suspicious. This is a positively charged carbon. We cannot have that. So where are we going to grab the electrons to fix that? How about from one of these lovely oxygens, from one of these alcohols? We'll do just that. Pop that, grab it down. Ah, you're seeing what's gonna happen. We have a double bond. This is starting to look more like a carboxylic acid again, but we still have a pesky positive charge up here. And that positive charge, we can clean up with whatever we've got in solution. So again, let's say we've got our, just our little alcohol group in there. We'll take that, grab it, put the electron back on, and we'll get something. We now have our ester group. We have a nice carbonyl group up there, and our R group has remained unchanged. These are our final products for this big reaction. We have finally gotten a carboxylic acid with a methyl group stuck on it. Now, why did we have to use the acid? Well, frankly, without the acid, the compound is just too stable to react. The acid destabilizes it enough for something as weak as a methanol to come on in there and open up the carbonyl. Now, on the topic of carbonyls, another important reaction we want to know is the decarboxylation reaction. And this one is much simpler, so don't worry. If this one has tuckered you out, the decarboxylation is very straightforward, and it occurs during high heat. 
And it's exactly what it sounds like. We are going to decarboxylate something. This means that under high heat, which I'll symbolize by a triangle, or I'll write 800 degrees Celsius, we're going to remove a CO2 group. Okay, well, we've got a carbon. Here's one oxygen. Here's another CO2. And then we're going to keep whatever's left. So we're going to have that R group and an H. So we have completely gotten rid of this. This is gone. All we've got left is an H. Crazy. All it took was some heat. And this has gone up as a gas. The final thing we want to talk about concerning carboxylic acids are the acidity of the hydrogens. And when we have a plain carboxylic acid, we see that you know this H is going to be very acidic. However, when we have two carboxylic acids together, something we call a dicarboxylic acid, our alpha hydrogens have very significant acidic behavior and are likely to be reactive. This is due to resonance effects of the oxygen atoms. On the topic of acidity, it's also nice to know that carboxylic acids on an amino acid have a pKa of roughly 2. This will conclude our video series on carboxylic acids. You should now know the highest yield material for the organic chemistry portion of the MCAT. Feel good about it. Thank you so much for watching our video, and I will see you next time.